Geometry. Thanks for tuning in for another episode of Math with Mullins. Today we're looking at lesson 10.6, Segment Relationships and Circles. So we'll be able to use the segments of chords, tangents, and secants and be able to solve for missing pieces of that. One reminder we want to talk about, because we're going to see some of those examples later on, is we can use the quadratic formula to solve situations where we have this. AX squared plus bx plus c equals zero. So the quadratic formula can be found if x and x can be equal to, and then you might have been um, given a song, negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a, okay? So that just means if you are given like this example, 0 equals 5x squared plus 8x minus 15. Here is your A, this is your B, this is your C. So you would plug those into the quadratic formula. Negative B would be negative 8 plus or minus the square root of 8 squared minus 4 times A times C, which is negative 15, all over 2 times A. Okay. That just reduces to negative 8 plus or minus the square root of 64 minus, if not, 4 times 5 is 20. 20 times negative 15 is negative 300. But then that negative, negative turns to plus positive over 2 times a, so it's 2 times 5. Oops which is 10, so we get negative 8 plus or minus the square root of 364 over 10, and then we can simplify these numbers on the outside, so negative 4 plus or minus the square root of, this becomes like 2 square root 91, so plus or minus 2 square root 91 over negative 8 plus or minus 2 square root of 2 square root 91 over 10 and then that just reduces all the way down to negative 4 plus or minus square root 91 over 5 okay so let's see how we can maybe apply that later on theorem we're going to talk about today first is the segment of chords theorem if two chords intersect in the interior of a circle, then the product of the lengths of the segments of one chord is equal to the product of the length of the other one. So in this case, here we have chord CD and we have chord AB. And what we can do is we can take EA, which is this length, times EB, is going to be equal to the product of EC times ED. Okay? This would be a good picture to draw in your notes on your theorem sheet. When you've got it drawn, go ahead and click play so we can try some examples. So what we're going to do is try to find the measurements of ML and JK, but the only thing that is not given to us is whatever X is equal to. So we're going to use that formula where we're given, if I can just take the products of each chord and set them equal to that one. So the first one I have X times X plus 4 should be equal to X plus 2 times X plus 1. This is where you can do the FOIL method or distribution. So x squared plus 4x is equal to x squared plus 1x plus 2x plus 2. Or put that even further, x squared plus 4x equals x squared plus 3x plus 2. Now let's combine some like terms. I'm going to move my 3x over to join my other 4x, and I'm also going to move my x squared, but the nice thing when I move these, they're going to cancel out, so I be, get 1x is equal to 2, so x equals 2. So that's the first thing I need, then I just find out, okay, well what is ml and what is um, jk? So ml can be found by doing x plus 2 
plus x plus 1. Okay, so that would be 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 1, or 7. So ml is equal to 7. And then jk, I have x plus x plus 4. So that entire chord length, or 2 plus 2 plus 4, is 8. So jk equals 8. Okay. Here are some more. It says find the value of x. These are a little bit easier. Why don't you go ahead and pause the video here, try these two on your own, and when you're ready, click play. So we have 3 times x is equal to 6 times 4, or 3x is equal to 24, so x is equal to 8. And then on this side, we have 2 times x plus 1 is equal to 4 times 3, or 2x plus 2 is equal to 12 or 2x is equal to 10, so x equals 5, okay? Next up, we have something called a tangent segment and a secant segment. So let's make sure we get to that point in our notes. We have a tangent segment is a segment that is a tangent to a circle at an endpoint. Um, so that just means like here, PS is a tangent segment because it goes from, it's touching the circle, yes, but it's ending at point P. A secant segment is a segment that contains a chord of a circle and has exactly one endpoint outside the circle. So like PR is called a secant seg segment because it's including a chord plus a segment on the outside. And then the part of a secant segment that is on the outside, that's called the external segment. So PQ is the external segment of PR. This would be a good picture to draw and label in your notes if needed. Once you have that done, let's go ahead and click play and continue on. So now that we have that underway, we're gonna talk about how that applies to this theorem. So theorem 10.19 states, a segment of secants theorem. If two secant segments share the same endpoint, like in this point, in this case, they're sharing endpoint E outside of a circle, then the products of the lengths of one secant segment and an external segment equals the products of the length of the other secant segment and its external segment. So in this case, we have EA times EB is equal to the product of EC times ED, okay? Um, so notice it's like jumping from E to A and then E to B, so short times long. And then same thing here, EC times ED, short times long. Just make sure you have that copied in your notes for your theorem sheet, and when you're ready to check and try some questions, go ahead and click play. All right, we're gonna find the value of x. So what we just learned is we can take our segment, so short, sorry, let me do this here, short times long, so nine times 20, because the long thing is the entire thing, is equal to 10 times 10 plus whatever x is, okay? I know nine times 20 is 180, and then distributing here, I get 100 plus 100, or 10x, then I just need to simplify, so I'm going to move my 100 to join the 180. I get 80 is equal to 10x, so x is equal to 8. Okay? Next up, let's see if you can try these. So let's pause the video here, try these on your own, and when you're ready to check, go ahead and click play. So this first one, I'm doing short times long, so 6 times 15 is equal to short 5 times long 5 plus x Oops. okay 6 times 15 is 90 and then distributing this 5 I get 25 plus 5x subtracting 25 from both sides I'm gonna get 65 is equal to 5x so x has to be 13 okay for number four, we've got a lot of x's here, so this is where you could use the quadratic formula. Um, you don't have to, there are other ways to try it, but know that that's always an option. So short would be three times the entire thing, three plus x plus five, which would just be, if I combine these, 3 plus x plus 2, that's where I'm getting the 3 
plus, or sorry, the five plus x. So this is three. There we go, okay. So three times x plus five. And again, how I'm getting that x plus five is I'm doing three plus x plus two. Adding those three and twos together is equal to x plus one times x plus one, x plus x minus one. Okay, with this, notice your ones are gonna cancel out, so all that's left is that two x, okay? So I'm gonna get three x plus 15 is equal to I'm just basically distributing to the 2x, so 2x squared plus 2x, okay? We can combine some like terms here, um, but really when we, we want to maybe get this set up into the 0 is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. So that means I just want to move everything over to the right, so I'm going to subtract 15 and subtract 3x so that I get 0 equals 2x squared minus 1x minus 15 okay now I have my a my b and my c so here we go negative b which is negative negative 1 plus or minus the square root of b squared, negative 1, minus 4 times a times c, all over 2a. Okay, let's go ahead and condense some things down. Negative negative 1 is going to change to positive 1. So I'm going to have, I'm going to come over here, 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 squared, which is 1, minus 4 times 2 is 8. 8 times negative 15 is going to be 120. So this would end up being negative, negative 120. But then that actually turns out to plus 120. And then over 4. So I have 1 plus or minus the square root of 121 over 4, which is now 1 plus or minus 11 over 4. So I can do 1 plus 11 over 4 and 1 minus 11 over 4. Okay, this first one will be 12 over 4, which is equal to 3, or negative 10 over 4, which at that point, <coughs> if you want to just simplify it as negative 5 halves, you can, or negative 2.5. Okay, so this is where we're going to have two different options of what x can be equal to. The only thing is that you have to think about which one is going to make sense. And because we're measuring distance, this negative 5 halves won't work. Okay, so I'm going to eliminate that negative 5 halves and just answer with a 3. So x has to be 3. Okay, that just means I can plug in negative 5 halves up here and it won't create the support for that um, theorem 10.19. All right. The last theorem we're going to discuss in our notes today is 10.20, Segments of Secants and Tangents Theorem. If a secant segment is an, and a tangent segment share an endpoint outside the circle, then the product of the lengths of a secant segment and its external segment equals the square of the length of the tangent segment. So that just means I only have a secant segment here. So this is EA squared should be equal to EC times ed, and that's short times long, okay? So we're going to try that now. This is different from what we've seen before, because if you notice, we're going through the circle and creating chords. This one is just a secant versus a chord, okay? Or secant versus, secant ta tangent versus a chord. So we're going to try this one. So according to this, it says I can take 16 squared and let that be equal to EC times ED. So this times 
that. So 16 squared is equal to x times x plus 8, right? Once I get here, let's go ahead and simplify. So that's 256 is equal to x squared plus 8x. And then I want to put this in my quadratic formula. So I'm going to just bring that 256 over. So I have 1x squared plus 8x minus 256. So here's my A, my B, and my C. Okay, my A, my B, and my C can then be used in my quadratic formula. So negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. Okay, so let's go ahead and clean this up just a little bit. I'm going to come down here next. So negative 8 plus or minus, I've got 64 minus 4 times 1 is 4, 256 times negative 256 times 4 is negative 1024. But these are going to change to plus positive and then over 2. Okay, so now I've got this negative 8 plus or minus the square root of 64 plus 1024 or 1088 over 2. And then this can be broken down this radical into I'm getting um, 8 square root 17 over 2. So then that's just going to create some um, simplification here. So negative 8 plus or minus 4 square root 17 which can give me about 12.49, okay? The last one, find the radius of the aquarium tank. So again, this is still using that idea of 20 squared is equal to eight times eight plus two R, right? So that's 400 equals 16 R sorry, 64 plus 16R. And then this one will be nice because there's no squaring. So I'm just going to subtract and get R by itself. I'm going to get 336 is equal to 16R. So R is about 21 feet. Okay. Sometimes you can solve this without using the quadratic formula, but when you are given X's and X squareds, that is the, probably the case where you're going to have to use that, okay? Hopefully this video helped you. Um, if it did, give it a thumbs up and tune in next time when we go over our quiz review. Thanks again, Geometry, and hope you have a great day. Bye-bye.